Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome to today's Daf, which is Psachim Kafei. We begin three lines from the top. You know, every Psachim is filled with stories which bring out various halachas. Today's Blad as well begins with a story involving Rav Hananya Bar Shlamya. That was his name. The Talmidah the Rav, together with Talmidim of Rav, Havu Yasri Busudasa, they were involved in a Suda on Erev Shabbos. The Koi Alayu, Rav Amnuna Saba. Rav Amnuna Saba was serving them, and it was getting close to Shabbos. Umrule, they turned to him and they said, Zil Chazi, go take a look. Go see what time it is. I Magdish Yoyma, if Shabbos has already arrived, Nafsik. In that case, we'll interrupt our meal. Rashvam says, we'll remove our tables. Each one had their, um, each person had their own individual table. Remove, removing tables, birchas hamazoin, and we'll start fresh. Vnik be'el shabbat, and we'll reestablish our suda for the sake of Shabbos. L'shem Shabbos. You can't just continue as though nothing happened. You have to stop your weekday meal, and then start a new Suda Shabbos? Amr Lahu. He responded to them, Loit Srichisu, that's unnecessary. You don't have to terminate your meal. You don't have to move away your tables, say Berchas Hamazen. No need to do that. All you need to do, create some sort of hacker. And we actually learned back in the beginning of the parrot, there was a machlekes between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yaisi. When a person is engaged in a suda at a Shabbos, Shabbos arrives. According to Rabbi Yehuda, you have to stop. You have to discontinue the suda, birchas hamazain, and start fresh the same suda Shabbos. Whereas according to Rabbi Yesi, there's no need to stop. You can continue eating late into the night. When he's finally done, he benches and then says Kiddush. Now there was a compromised shita of sorts. That was a shita of Shmuel. And as we're going to see here, Shitas Rav as well, which doesn't follow Rabbi Yehuda or Rabbi Yesi either way. We don't follow each route completely, rather something in the middle. Create a hacker, which is called Pyrus Mapa, you take a tablecloth, a sheet, a napkin, and cover up the food. Now that it's out of sight, that creates some sort of interruption, some sort of pause in that meal. Now it's time for Kiddush. Kiddush sets the tone and indicates that going forward, the next segment of that meal will be the Shabbos meal. But there really is no need to actually discontinue the Suda complete to terminate the Suda by removing tables and benching. Amr Luhu, Rav Yema, Rav Amnuna Saba responded to them, There's no need to do this. Shabbat Kava Nafsha, Shabbos establishes itself. It makes an impact. It affects what you're doing. It's automatic. What you're going to eat on Shabbos is considered to the Shabbos. There's no need to get up and make that uh, announcement. You don't have to cut your Suda and start fresh. That segment of your meal which will be eaten come Shabbos is automatically credited to your Shabbos account. It's considered to the Shabbos. In fact, as soon as Shabbos arrives, you have to make Kiddush. You may not eat before Kiddush. What does that show you? It shows you that when Shabbos arrives, it brings the Kiddusha with it. It has an effect on you. It impacts what you're doing and you have to acknowledge Shabbos with Kiddush. What follows is that apparently the Achila going forward, is a Shabbos Achit, is Suda Shabbos. And there's no need to actually cut your Suda with Bercha Samazayim. You may continue the same Suda, and that segment of the Suda which takes place on Shabbos will be considered the Suda's Shabbos. And he continued, I'll prove it to you from Rav. He was addressing Talmidah the Rav. Rav, your Rebbe, holds of this Svar, Dhamma Rav. Keshem Shah Shabbos Kevas Lamasa. Just as we know that Shabbos determines, establishes when it comes to Maser, Rashvam explains as follows. We know that, generally speaking, when we have um, produce which 
is still before Gemar Melacha. The process hasn't yet been completed. It's not a fully finished product. You can snack from it, you can have a bite from it, a sudas, a temporary meal. But, if Shabbos arrives, in that case you cannot even have a sudas arai because, as Rashbam explains, the karasa of Shabbos, oinig, anything we eat on Shabbos, is classified as, is labeled as oinig, as delight, it has prominence, it has significance, it has chashivus, and even just a snack, just a bite, is considered something of significance if it takes place on Shabbos. It's an achil Shabbos. And therefore, it is considered like a sudas kva, which requires masa to be separated. Therefore, says Rav, just as Shabbos has that effect, when Shabbos comes along, it reclassifies what you're going to eat. It's considered the achilah of Shabbos. With respect to Maser, <coughs> Shabbos kevas the Kiddush. Likewise, Shabbos affects your eating habits with respect to Kiddush. Which means that as soon as Shabbos arrives, you may not eat before Kiddush. Chacham established Kiddush as being the first item on your Shabbos agenda. It's the first thing on the schedule with respect to Achila. First Kiddush and then you may eat. What does that show? That shows that when Shabbos comes, the Kiddush arrives and it impacts you. It has an effect. Therefore, Kiddush is required and only then can you eat. Explains the Rashbam. The very fact that you can no longer eat until you make Kiddush isn't that the biggest hefsik in your Suda? You're concerned about Suda Shabbos. Where, where is Suda Shabbos going to be if this is your weekday Suda? Right? That's why they suggested that we have to be mafsik. We have to completely discontinue the Suda. We have to end the weekday meal, the Friday meal, and begin Shabbos meal. Well, Rav explained to us that when Shabbos arrives, you may not eat before Kiddush. Now, if you can't eat any longer, isn't that the biggest hefsek? Doesn't that show that the weekday experience has just ended and now begins the Shabbos experience? First Kiddush, and then the Shabbos Suda. Therefore, you don't need to remove your tables, nor say, just be Paris Mapa, be Makadish, and everything following that Kiddush is automatically counted as Suda Shabbos. Suffer me not. Now they figured, based on this halacha, just as Shabbos on the way in, when Shabbos arrives, it is Kiveya with respect to Kiddush. It is a of Kiddush. It's an automatic trigger. Same thing on the way out. When Shabbos departs, if one is engaged in a meal, he has to stop to make Havdalah. We know that one may not eat before Havdalah, just as you can't eat before Kiddush. Havdalah is meant to be the first the first on the list. Before you eat, you have to make Abdullah. Perhaps you have to stop your meal to make Abdullah. Amal, who Rav Amram, Rav Amram responded and said, No, I have another quote from Rav himself. Lekidish Kaivas. Shabbos only determines and impacts with respect to Kiddush, meaning on the way in. When Shabbos arrives, you have to stop and make Kiddush. But now when it comes to Abdullah, Kavas, It is not kaveh when it comes to Abdullah. Meaning, you can extend your suda shlishes well to the night. On the way in, upon its its arrival, yeah, you have to stop and acknowledge the arrival of Shabbos. But on the way out, explains the Rashbam, it's actually a greater covered Shabbos to extend one's meal, to extend the Shabbos experience into Matzah Shabbos. Only when they're done, they bench and then they make Abdullah. Now this halacha that Havdala won't interfere that is strictly regarding being mafsik. He's engaged in a suda, suda shlishis, you don't have to stop. <coughs> but certainly when we not initiate an achila before Havdala come to your Shabbos, the first thing is Havdala. You can't just sit down to eat. Now this 
leniency, this allowance to continue eating, meaning not to be mafsik, that's only said when he's engaged in a real meal, el b'achila. He's engaged in a, he's involved in a suda. Taisa says a suda has kvias. And that Shabbos suda is now extending into, into Matzai Shabbos. And it's considered one continuous experience. Therefore, you can wait until you're done and then make up though. But if you're just taking a drink or fruit or mezainus for that matter, and farsham ad, we don't have this heter. Because even if he began drinking on Shabbos and now he's extending it, so to speak, at the Moitzvah on Shabbos, Shtia doesn't have the same chashivas as a meal. It's not a it's not a single experience from beginning to end. Each each cup of wine, each cup of juice is a separate masa. And you cannot drink before Havdal. Continues the Gemara. Ushtia nami la'amar. And even this restriction of Shtia is limited. La'amar el b'cham v'shichra. It only pertains to something of significance. We spoke about food. Or even drink if it's Chashav, chamer, wine, sheikh, beer, of a maya, but simply to grab a cup of, of water, less lamba, there's no concern there. That's not something which is considered a, uh, a negation, a disregard for the Abdullah. Just uh, taking a glass of water, and that's not so, that's not considered so severe. That does not need to wait until after Abdullah. Continues the Gemara. Opligid Rafuna. Actually, this is Chelik and Rafuna. The Rafuna Chazie lahu gavra. Rafuna observed this fellow the Shas Samai Kaid Mavdola. He was drinking wa- water before Avdola. Armalei turned to him and he said, "Loy Mustafi, my maskar. You're not concerned about this askar or sickness, which can come as a result of disregard for Avdola. The Tana Mishmei the Rakiva, as we learned in the Bright Name of Rakiva. Kolatoyim Klum." Kaidam Shiyad, the one who is telling him something before Havdala, Misasiba Askara. His Misa is Askara, Tais explains, this is Mida connected, Mida measure for measure. He um, was, he was Masbiya Groin, he filled his, uh, his throat, he satiated himself with food and drink before Havdala, Ye Chanek. The uh, deserving punishment is Chanek, choking the Askara is Bimkaim Chanek, it resembles Chanek as he brings the Gemara Suvois how Chenek corresponds to Askara. In any case, that's the fitting punishment for disregard for disregarding Abdullah. And apparently, Rav Huna was concerned even when it comes to drinking water before Abdullah. However, concludes the Gemara, Rabbonan, the Be'i Ravashi, Lo'i Kapti Amayi, the Rabbonan, the Be'i Ravashi, were not makbid about drinking water before Abdullah. Let's summarize the Gemara. We have a Suda on Arab Shabbos who may pull it straight into Shabbos as long as he creates some sort of slight hacker, puris mapa, covers up the food, and gets up and makes Kiddush. This way he is showing that going forward it's going to be for Shabbos. He's acknowledging the arrival of Shabbos. There's no need to actually create a new Suda because Shabbos takes care of itself and the next segment of that meal will automatically be reclassified as Suda's Shabbos. This halacha that you have to stop for Kiddush is unique to Kiddush, but not to Abdullah, provided he's engaged in a Suda, in which case we consider it all as one continuous experience, and there's no need to stop for Abdullah, but just to take food or drink is Asr. But as the Mark concludes, Mayim is fine. Let's take a look at the Rashbam inside. Ten lines from the top of the of the Rashbam, beginning with the words "Havayasvi b'sudasa." Getting back to that story, that these Amoraim was sitting and having a meal erev Shabbos. It was erev Shabbos, and they they delayed, they extended the meal until it was already dark. They sent out the shliach to check what time it was. Perhaps we have to stop. V'nafsik b'akira shulchan, remove our tables. V'nikbe l'sudaseinu b'shabbat al-shem shabbos. Perhaps we have to redesignate for the sake of shabbos. And he told them, no, there's no need to do that. Let's rechisu l'hafsik b'akira shulchan, k'day l'havdil ben sudas chay l'sudas shabbos. There's no need to do that. Why? The shabbos he kavanafsha. L'sudasa. Shabbos already takes care of its own sudas. 
Look, since Shabbos' arrival will generate a Yisr, no longer allows us to continue eating without Kiddush. God that. You have a bigger hefsek than that? Apparently it's no longer weekday. It's Shabbos. Shabbos, which is which is connected to to Shabbos. It's automatically nechshav. It's chashiva asuda Shabbos, and it's already considered separate from the first segment, from the choyl segment of that suda v'daylochem b'frisas mapa b'kiddush. It's enough to cover up the food with a mapa and a kiddush. And he quoted Rav. To this effect, who said, "Just as Shabbos, Kishem shekavas l'masa, just as Shabbos has a power to be kaveh when it comes to masa, pirush, achilas aray the Shabbos, <coughs> even a informal suda for Shabbos, chash v'oisa kaval l'masa, mesach speitz is considered like an established meal. The Gemara Beitz speaks about it, b'shum dava oinik because it's considered oinik." It's classified as Enoch Shabbos. That's not just a mundane eating experience. And if that's the case, I feel Sudas Kosho Kval. Even a just a small size meal, a small size achila, is considered something of permanence. And therefore, one may not partake in produce before it was misered. Even if he's simply eating an achilas aray because it's Shabbos, that achilah has significance, has an element of permanence to it, and therefore you cannot eat tevel in that state. So just as Shabbos has that power when it comes to masa, it reclassifies the achilah, it gives it chashivas, likewise it has the same effect when it comes to kiddush, kivas the kiddush, she'asa litam kaddish. One may not even have a taste. You can't even tell you even something small before Kiddush. Apparently, anything that takes place after dark, after nightfall, when Shabbos has already arrived, is Chashev and is already considered Achilas Shabbos. It seems in the Rashbam, that the connection is as follows. Just as we see that Shabbos is so chashev, that even a minor snack is considered chashev, considered something of significance, something of chashivas, and therefore you can't eat tevel because it's considered like a sudas kva, which is also by tevel. Likewise, you can't even be him something before Kiddush. It has chashivas, it has significance. And even, even if it was already in the middle of a meal, as Tesis points out, he already, he already was maschal, his meal. It was a Friday meal. As soon as Shabbos arrives, you have to stop. Because any achil on Shabbos, even the smallest snack, has chashivas, is considered a Shabbos achil. It cannot be done before Kiddush. So there's two chidushim here. Even a small te'ima is considered Shabbos food, Shabbos eating experience, and therefore Kiddush precedes that. And as Jesus points out, even if he's already in the middle of a meal, he has to stop. Stop for Kiddush. Because anything that he's going to eat on Shabbos is classified as Achilas Shabbos. And Kiddush needs to precede that. So what do we see? That Shabbos reestablishes the meal, reclassifies the meal as Suda Shabbos going forward, and therefore there's no need to actually terminate that weekday meal, just get up and make Kiddush, and going forward you will experience Suda Shabbos. The Gemara figured, well, if this happens when Shabbos arrives, with respect to Kiddush, perhaps the same thing happens when it comes to Abdullah. Kach kavas 
they're sitting and having a meal. And when Shabbos arrives, also lechlash yavdilu. They must stop their meal, make havdola, va'afal bishlev sikus adosan. You don't actually have to stop the meal, Rashbam says, peris mapo mavdil, just spread a mapo out there and make havdola. That's what they figure, that's what has to be done. Shitzia Shabbos isrosa machila v'kevas lavdola. Because when Shabbos leaves, it no longer allows you to eat and requires you to make havdola. And the more responds, no. Havdol ain't a kivas. The kivan shehischil besu the Shabbos we boy do him. Just the opposite. Since you've begun su the Shabbos when it was still daytime, zel kavet Shabbos she goimer su dase afal achas shehechshach. It's actually an honor for Shabbos to extend Shabbos beyond the boundaries of of that day. Extend your meal. Extend the Shabbos experience. And only after he completed his meal, then he will make Havdol. Interesting, Atosis brings the name of Rabbi Tam that he asks, he asks Akash and Al-Gemara, it seems that they would eat that late, so close to Matzai Shabbos. And Rabbi Tam was cross, he was angry at and Rabbi Meshulam, who had the um, who established this the minute to eat so the shlishit between Chamarv and he says it's contrary to the the medrash which says that if a person drinks between uh, drinks mine between ben um, he's he's goizelus crave of hamesim he's robbing from the um, deceased the farshim explained because the neshamas um, rishon go back to Gehenna on Shabbos and the they approach the Mayim, which indicates Chesed and Rachmim, as we say, Tashlech by water to Mo'ir Rachmim. They approach the waters to Mo'ir Rachmim on themselves, and when one partakes, one drinks water, and at that point it appears that it seems that it interferes with the with the process. So it's not something to be done, and eating as well during that time for some reason disrupts the uh, process, and he's Goizel Krev Hamesim. And Titus goes into the whole discussion that it's not meant to be done. And therefore he says that maybe Al Gemara was speaking that they began the Suda before Mincha, in which case, since they were Maschal Behet, it's not so, it doesn't have that same effect. But interestingly, that I noticed in the Sefer today that there's a different Gersa in a Tam that he actually requires Shalashudas to be after Mincha, specifically after Mincha. That's the right time for Suda Shlishis. And they bring that the Medrash about drinking is specific to water. Some say it's only specific to water from a flowing river. In any case, there are various. Uh, versions and and uh, and minhagim and approaches regarding this topic of the uh, of the mason uh, late late day Shabbos. In any case, the Rashbam learns very clearly that it's Kavit Shabbos to extend the Sudashlishes well into the night. Continues the Rashbam. Vahani mili. Now this halacha, the Avdola in a kivas lafsuk sedosa. The Avdola doesn't reestablish things. Doesn't. Uh, have that effect to the extent that you have to stop your meal. No, you can continue your meal. That's only lafsuka sudasa. It doesn't interrupt, doesn't interfere with the suda, doesn't require you to end your meal. You cannot initiate an achila matzah shabbos before Abdullah. And this that we say that it's not mafsik, you don't have to interrupt your meal. That's only if it's lachila, it's engaged in a suda, in which case we consider it to be one continuous. Achil experience until Bircha Samozan. It's the Shamas experience being extended. But just drinking is not a Dabr Choshev. And just because he's drinking, you have to stop. Because, as Mfarshim explained, every drink, every cup is a new experience. You can't initiate something for Abdullah. This is to be masculine, is only a Lechamar Veshikhar wine and beer. Avamaya, but simply water, less than is no concern. As we concluded, the Rabbanan. They may smell the shervashi, like Kapta Maya. They were not makbid, they were not particular about drinking water, coming Abdullah. Avol says Rashbam, you meant to know, that this is only when it comes to Abdullah. Avol kame kedusha kapti. But certainly before Kiddush, one is not meant to drink even water. Mishum kavit Shabbos. Kiddush stands higher than Abdullah. You're 
accepting Shabbos upon yourself, you're acknowledging the arrival of Shabbos, that stands higher. And that's meant to be the first thing that you're going to consume. Therefore, even drinking water before Kiddush is not allowed. Some Rafashim explain because Kiddush is not Torah, whereas Abdullah is only the Rabbanon. In any case, we have that distinction when it comes to water. V'hochi hilchasa. Concludes the Rashbam, V'shamina nami. And we hear from this Gemara as well, Shema Yisoy the Meshavas, if they were engaged in a meal on Shabbos, V'hech Sheikh and the Gadak, Goyimin Kol Sodasan, they're certainly allowed to finish the entire meal, Mezamnan, they do Berchas Hazimon, they bench, V'acha Kach Mavdilin, and then, only then, do they go, proceed to Havdol. Continues the Gemara. Bo'eminei, Ravina, Merav Nach Mar Yitzchak. Ravina asks, Ravnach Mar Yitzchak, the following Shai. If one missed uh, Kiddush on Friday night, can he make it up the next day? Can one say the, the Nusach of Friday night Kiddush on Shabbos day? Omar Lei Rav Nachum Bar Yitzchak responded, Sure he can. From the fact that the Bnei Rav told us, one who missed Havdal on Moitzoy Shabbos, he can still make it up. He can still make Havdalah throughout the next week. Rashbam explains, up until and including the next Tuesday, which is still somewhat connected and related and identifies with the previous Shabbos. Although he missed the ideal Zman of Havdalah, he can still make it up afterwards. Achanam here as well when it comes to Kiddush. Mishalei Kiddush bear of Shabbos. One who missed Kiddush Friday night, Mikadish v'hoidach kol hayem kulay. He can still make up that Kiddush throughout the next day. Eisvei, Ravina responded with a kasha from a brisa. The brisa says, Leile Shabbos, v'leile yom tov, on Friday night, on the night of yom tov. Yesh b'hen Kiddush ala kois. Chacham will masakin to make Kiddush with a cup of wine. V'yesh b'hen askora b'brachas hamazon. And during brachas hamazon, we add that supplement on Shabbos. We say Ritzay on Yom Tov. Yalav v'yavoi. Shabbos for Yom Tov. However, on Shabbos day and Yom Tov day itself, aim b'hem Kiddush ala kois. We don't go through that same text. The nusach of Kiddush. From Laila, rather, as Rashbam says, we suffice with a bracha, a mere bracha of Ber Priyagafen. That's it. V'yesh ben askora b'brichas hamazon. And of course, we add the Ritzay and the Alvi of it. Now, so this is the end of the price. Now comes the Kasha. V'yisal kadaitach. Now, if your halacha is correct, that Mishalei Kiddush Ber of Shabbos, if one missed Kiddush Friday night, Mikadish v'hoidach kuliyam kuloi, he can always make up the Kiddush by saying it the next day. If that's the case, then Shabbos v'yom tov nami. Mishkach as lehu, to yesh ben kedush al If so, then even Shabbos and yom tov days can occasionally have the full kiddush recited. Diloy kiddush murta. If you miss kiddush the previous night, mikadish l'machar. He will make kiddush the next day. Why then does the Brisa tell us that on Shabbos and Yantav by day there is no Kiddush? Amalei, he responded, the Eli Ktani, the Brisa is not speaking about a situation such as ours where he missed the uh, Kiddush Friday night. Rather, we're speaking about the way Chacham established the Halacha, the Masakin, that ideally the correct proper time is at night, but of course, my halacha is correct. If he misses that opportunity, he certainly can make it up the next day. Eisve, he asked him another kashim or brisa. Covered yoyim be covered laila. Suppose a person has some food, something special for Shabbos. He has a choice of whether to eat it at night, to be makabed the laila, to give honor to the night of Shabbos, or to use it for the next day, for covered yoyim. Which one takes precedence? Covered yoyim koidem. The covet of the daytime takes priority. And the Mepharshim explain the main suda is the daytime suda. 
you know, today in America, the, the main meal is dinner, but in the olden days, the main meal was the daytime meal. The nighttime meal was just a uh, a small size meal, small experience. But the Iker Suda was the day. In some European countries, that's that's the way it still is. The Iker Suda is the day Suda. Some version point to the fact that the Kurbanis of Shabbos are brought by day. The Iker time to Mechabit the Yom is by day. That's why the special foods are meant to be, are meant to be are meant to be designated for Yom. Covered Yom, covered Laila, covered Yom, covered Yom. So it's interesting, when it comes to Kiddush, Kiddush Laila is Adif. The Kiddush at night is a more extensive Kiddush. As opposed to the, in contrast to the Kiddush Yom, which is merely a Bayer Priyagafen. Merely to, to mark the occasion. But the Bracha, Bracha on wine. Some say it's merely a Birchas Hanen. Some actually say it's a Birchas Hamitzvah. But in any case, it's just a Birchas Bayer Now, if communion would be, if a person can be mighty somebody else. You know, once you had your own Kiddush, can you make a Bayer Priyagafen for the sake of somebody else? If it's a Mitzvah Bracha, well, we know that all Yisrael are ravens that was there. Responsible for each other, you can make a mitzvah, a bracha, and a mitzvah for somebody else. But if it's just a uh, bracha for Hana, then you can't make her eight if you're not going to eat the apple. In any case, that's a shaila by Kiddush Yom, because it's only a bare priyagafen. But Kiddush Laila is an extensive nusach that's to mark the the arrival of Shabbos. But when it comes to kavod to mechavid, the ikka kavod is meant to take place by day. So that's the first item on the list. Kavod Yom is others. Continues the Brisa. What about if he only has one glass of wine? And he has a choice. Can he use it for Kiddush Laila, which is superior to Kiddush Yom? Or can he save it for tomorrow and drink it in the middle of his meal to provide Kavit Shabbos? Which way is it? Kiddush Hayyim. Rather than leaving it for tomorrow, you drink it now, even though he has the option of making Kiddush on bread. No. Kiddush on wine is more important. Do it in its right time, the right way. Kiddush Hayyim doesn't mean the Kiddush of the daytime. It means the Kiddush of the Yom of Shabbos, which takes place at night. That supersedes covered Yom. So again, he takes this glass of wine. Instead of using it tomorrow during the Suda, to have, to experience Kavit Shabbos by day, he will drink it tonight for the Kiddush ceremony. Why? Because Kiddush on Shabbos is Kaidim, it's superior, it takes precedence to the Kavit of Shabbos. That's the price. So firstly we learned that Kavit Yom is superior to Kavit Laila. But of course, Kiddush of Laila supersedes Kiddush of Yom and even supersedes Kavad Yom. Says the Gemara, and this was the Kasha on Amnach Mar Yitzchak, if what you said holds true, you can always make up your Kiddush tomorrow, then why is it this or that? Vim Isa, according to you, Lushaf Kad Lamachar, let him leave his wine over for tomorrow. And cover both elements. Don't drink it in the middle of your meal. Rather, use it for Kiddush, before your meal. Don't say Kiddush tonight. And have that Kiddush performed tomorrow. In which case, you fulfill both elements. You have Kiddush on wine, and you have covered, uh, covered Shabbos by day. Omar Leh, he responded to him. Here it's different. Chaviva mitzvah b'shat. It is better to perform a mitzvah in its prescribed time. Ideally, Kiddush is meant to take place at night. We're speaking about the, the primary Kiddush, the Kiddush Lila. That's meant to take place at night. Sure, if you missed you make it up tomorrow. But Chaviva Mitzvah Beshata. It's dear, it's preferred to fulfill a mitzvah in its right time, in its right place, in its prescribed setting. Therefore, even 
if it's at the expense of Kavay the Shabbos. He's going to drink his wine tonight. He won't have anything left for tomorrow. Fulfilling that mitzvah of Kiddush in its right time supersedes the other consideration. As says the Rashbam, on the first wide line, Chavivim mitzvah Rishata, where do we find this? Kedoma be'il dvarim. We learned this earlier in Pesachim. Shari hekta chalom be'varim k'sherim k'alayla. You know, when you have a carbon on Shabbos, not only do you shecht and zerk the carbon, but even the chalom be'varim, which can really be brought on Matzah Shabbos. It's kasha throughout the entire night. No, we don't wait until Matzah Shabbos. We bring a bishat on Shabbos itself, even at the expense of Chilol Shabbos. Ve'em amtil on Shabbos hashatech We don't wait till the night. Shnei ma'olas Shabbos v'Shabbat. Hilkoch yikadosh b'balayla. That takes us back to our Gemara. He has one glass of wine. Do kiddush at night. V'lo yam tumoy ad mocher. And rather, rather do that than wait till tomorrow. Even if it's at the expense of Kavid Yoim, because you don't forego doing a mitzvah in its appropriate way. Bishata, in order to make another mitzvah. Okay, so getting back to our Shaila, of course, if you missed Kiddush night, you can make it up tomorrow. But that doesn't mean that this is a preferred route. L'chatchil, you meant to do it at night, if you have a way to do so. Continues the Gemara, Umi Amrina, Chaviva Mitzvah Shata. Do we really say that? Do we really prefer doing the Mitzvah Bishata in its time, even if, as a result, he's going to have to forego something else? Really? But Tanya, haven't we learned in a price? Hanichnas Lebei, so you might say Shabbos. One comes out, Matzah Shabbos. Mevarach, that's how we do Avdallah first. Brachasayain, Mar, Besamim, then Avdallah. The Morrison will tell us this is Shita's Bishamay. We actually do it the other way around. We do Besamim before Mar. So that's a standard. Now, if he knows that his wine is in short supply, he only has enough for one kais, and he'd like to sit down for Malva Malka, and by Brachasayain, he'd like to have a kais, Shabracha. What do we do to accommodate that? To accommodate that, mazen. He will leave this wine until after his meal, and then he will link everything together. Mashalshlan is lashon shalshal is a chain. He'll tie everything together. Berachas hamazon, his avdala, everything using that same kois. Apparently, one may delay his avdala for a while. In order to be mekayim, birchas hamaz nal kais. Oh, I'm reading on the chaviv mitzvah b'shata. We don't say, well, we prefer doing the mitzvah of avdala in its prescribed time. Don't forego that element of of, of b'shata to accommodate something else. If that's the case, then why, in the earlier brisa, don't we take that route? According to you, Rabbi Nachman Yitzchak, that. Kiddush can be said even the following day. If he has one cup of wine, let him leave it for the following day to be a kind Kiddush and Kavit Shabbos. As we see in this case of Havdalah. We allow him to delay, not to accommodate. Amalei, Rav Nachman Yitzhak responded, listen, Ano lecha kimo ano. I'm not a wise man. I didn't originate this halacha on my own. It's not mine. This halacha that if you miss Kiddush Friday night, you can make it up the next day. It's not my halacha. I'm not a magad, I'm not a preacher. And likewise, it wasn't a das yochad, an opinion of an individual that I was quoting. I learned it in Beis Mendesh, and I present my halachas in front of my rabbeim. And in the Beis Mendesh, they paskin like this. This was a halacha generated by consensus. It wasn't uh, my personal halacha or somebody else's. This is a, an accepted halacha that, yeah, if one misses a Kiddush Friday night, can make it up the next day. Now, regarding your Shiloh, if so, why is it the Bryce that tells us he's not meant to delay Kiddush till tomorrow? But when it comes to Abdullah, he's meant to delay it after Mava Malka? Why is that? So he responded, really, Chaviva Mitzvah Beshat. 
if one has the option to do so, he's meant to be Makayim Mitzvah in its prescribed time. Don't delay, even if it means foregoing another great thing. If that's the case, why? Why by Havdalah does he delay? The answer is like this. Shanion, there's a big difference. Between accepting the new arrival on oneself, accepting the Shabbos that just arrived, to bidding farewell to the Shabbos that's departing. Meaning, when it comes to bringing and ushering in the Shabbos, the quicker the better, the sooner the better. You're excited about Shabbos, which is arriving. And therefore we favor doing it in this way. We want to we want to do Kiddush at the first possible opportunity. We don't want to delay it. However, when it comes to Havdalah, which is saying goodbye to Shabbos, when it comes to the departing day, and the Havdalah takes place then, we actually look to delay that. So that it wouldn't appear that Shabbos is sitting on us like a burden and we're trying to unload that, that master, that burden. Therefore, the later the better. And despite the fact that Chaviva Mitzvah B'Shata, when it comes to Abdullah, we want to delay matters and we allow him to have his meal and then conclude with Berchah Samaz and Abdullah. So in conclusion, we learned that if one missed Kiddush Friday night, you can make it up the next day. Ideally, one of them to be with Kaim and Mitzvah B'Shata, certainly when it comes to Kiddush, as early as possible, but when it comes to Abdullah, as late as possible. And therefore when he has to accommodate the Berchah we allow him to even have his meal. And then, make Abdullah after Berchah Samazim. Interesting, that Moshe Feinstein, Igris Moshe, points to a very interesting insight here. He says, you would think that the point of delaying is based on Tisat and Shabbos. You're extending the Shabbos past nightfall. But in our Gemara it doesn't work because this fellow sat down to Baba Malka. He's doing Malacha. It's no longer Shabbos. What does the Gemara mean? Delaying of Abdullah, delaying of the departure of the day, the, the later the better. Shabbos is over. Says Ramosha, and he writes this by, um, by the Beis Yosef, who writes that, you know, on Matzah Shabbos, which is Hanukkah, the shail of what, what comes first, whether it's the Neiris Hanukkah or Havdalah, and the Beis Yosef says Hanukkah comes first because of this svar, went to delay the departure of Shabbos as much as possible. Says Ramosha Feinstein, how are you delaying Shabbos? You're lighting Hanukkah, you're, it's Matzah Shabbos. Apparently, says Ramesh, has nothing to do with Tisefes Shabbos. There's one thing called Tisefes Shabbos, that one is meant to delay Shabbos, to extend Shabbos, the Kedusha of Shabbos, refrain from Malacha, etc. That's one thing. But even when Shabbos is really over, he's doing Malacha, he's eating, he's lighting his manure, there is a point of delaying the Havdalah, saying goodbye to Shabbos, bidding farewell as late as possible. That shows that Shabbos is dear to him. It's still lingering by him. <laughs> He'd like to delay that goodbye ceremony as late as possible. And that's the point in Al Gemara. In fact, Ramosha points to an early Gemara that we already learned. We learned uh, on the Kubbeza of Beis, Yom that falls out of Matzah Shabbos. How do we combine the Havdalah and the Kiddush? Rav Amar Yakna. Right? That's what we do. Yain Kiddush near Havdalah. And the Rashbam, according to one shot, explains why is Kiddush before Abdullah? Why is Abdullah at last? Because of this reason. We want to delay the departure of Shabbos as late as possible. Says Ramesha, what do you mean? How are you delaying the departure of Shabbos? You've read, read, read Kiddush. Yain Kiddush. Now Abdullah, if it's Yantav, you've accepted Yantav upon yourself, then Shabbos is long over. You can't have both together. Shabbos was yesterday, Yantav is tomorrow. Says Ramosha, apparently it's based on the same point. Sure, Shabbos is no longer active. It's already Yom Tov, But the lingering effect of Shabbos is still, is still here, still felt. 
and he liked to delay bidding farewell to Shabbos, escorting the Shabbos out as late as possible. And that's why he'll first make Kiddush, and only at the end will make Havdalah. Continues the Gemara. Shema mino mehomas nisen mehomas niso tamid. We had a brisa. This fellow would like to have his mother Malka. We allow him to delay his Abdullah until after the meal. Says the Gemara, we can conclude and derive eight halachas from this brisa. Number one, Shema mino hamavda b'tfila zaroch shiyadol akoyis. If one says Abdullah during Mariv. Tosha says that most people, we assume that most people say they have dollar during Shmona Esra, Atachan Antano. Even if one does that, Sarach Shiyad Allah Kais, he has to make another Abdullah. Chacham Masaka to make Abdullah on a Kais as well. Because otherwise, why is this fellow facing a, a dilemma? He comes home, he already made Abdullah. He doesn't have to make another Abdullah. Apparently, yes, that is needed. Ushmamina, we learn as well, Brachatuna Kais that Birchas HaMazayin needs to have a kois. Otherwise, what's the, uh, what's the problem here? Let him make Havdol on the kois and uh, Birchas HaMazayin without a kois. And Toysus points out, Ktsas Mashma, Ktsas from this Gemara, that even a Yochid would make Birchas HaMazayin with a kois because the Bryce says, Hanicha Salvesa, one fellow came home, even just one person alone would make Birchas HaMazayin with a kois. However, Taisa says, The minute oilam is that only when three people eat together, they will make a Birch HaSamazan al In any case, that's what we see from this Brisa. Baruch HaTon HaKois. Ushmamina, we learn as well that Koisho Baruch HaTzorach Shir. That you need to have a Shir or a by the Koisho Baruch Because otherwise, why can't he take his Koisho of wine and split into two? One half for Abdullah, one half for Birchas Hamazon. Apparently, if you want to have a kois, you have to have a shir. Ushmamana, we learn as well, Hamavarach Tzarech Shiyotim. That one who makes a bracha al kois, he has to be toyim, he has to taste the wine. Rashram says, the person himself, but the Eved, he can pass it to others, but somebody has to drink from that wine. You can't just make a bracha on the wine and just leave it alone. It's... It's disregarding the wine. It's, it's a pgam, it's a bizarre to the wine to just make the bracha, use it for the bracha and then not take, not take from that wine. And that's a raya. A raya from al Gumar because otherwise why can't he just take the same kais, make Abdullah, not taste it and use it for bracha samazna as well. Ushmam no tamay pagmay. When one is tame wine, he taints it. He makes it a pogam, disqualifies it from further use. Because otherwise, as Taisa says, the Gemara is assuming that he has a bit more than a Revius. He doesn't have just exactly a Revius. He has a bit more. Why can't he take the same case for Avdallah, be time a little bit, leave a Revius behind, and use that for Birchus And Apparently, once he was time, he tasted it. That disqualifies the wine for further use. Ushmam no We learn from here that even if a person eats before Abdullah, you can still make Abdullah, and of course there's a special allowance. Generally, you don't eat before Abdullah, as we learned earlier. But in this case, out of necessity, Chacham required, that allowed him to have his meal before Abdullah, and there's no need to wait until tomorrow to make the Abdullah, as is going to be a Shita on the next half. Ushma Mino, we learn from here, Oimer Beis Tushis Lakis Echad, one can go ahead, when, he's, when his wine is in short supply, he can recite two Kedushes. Two mitzvahs can be done with the same Kais. Although generally, not meant to bundle mitzvahs together so it doesn't look like he's unloading a burden. But in this case, out of necessity, we allow it. And finally, we learn that this price is Beishamai. It's following Shita, it's Beishamai. But I'll leave the Rehuda in accordance with the version of Rehuda. This is referring back to the, orig- to the beginning of the price, which uh, listed the order of Avdallah as follows. Yayin. Ma'er b'samim than Avdol, and this is following Shita's Veshama in accordance with the Yudas version, as we already learned earlier in the Perik. So we have eight halachos from this price. Rav Ashi Amar he disagreed on one. He says, "Look, I agree that uh, as Tosis explains, I agree that Tamay Pogmay when one tastes uh, the the wine." From this, uh, from this cup, he certainly pagan that wine and cannot be used any longer for kosher bracha. I agree to that, Allah, but you can't learn it from this price. 
Tamay pogmay v'koshal bracha tzorachshir. These two halachas. One, that te'ima is pogim, and number two, that koshal bracha needs a shir of years. Chada milsi. It's really one and the same. It's based on the same point. Meaning, v'chakama, this is how you meant to say it. My taima tamay pogmay. Why is it? Why is that true? That if this fellow would drink a bit, he is pagan that wine, meaning it's no longer suitable for further use. It's because of this very reason that you need to have a shear. Meaning, as Tosis explains, Ravashi disagrees with our, our assumption that he had more than Ravis. We assume that he had a bit more than Ravis. Why couldn't he just taste it? during Abdullah, and they use the rest for Birch HaSamaz, and apparently the Ti'ima disqualifies it. That was the Gemara up until this point. Ravashi disagrees, he says, who says, we're speaking that he has more than a Raviyas? Maybe he has exactly a Raviyas. And the reason why he can't use it for Abdullah and then for Birch HaSamaz is because once he tastes it, tasting is a requirement, right? Once he tastes it, it's disqualified, but not... It's not halachically disqualified because it's tainted. You have no right to that. Rather, it's just a practical consideration. Because you need a shear of yes. The only way you can use it for Birch HaSamazin is if it has a reviz and no longer has a reviz. By tasting it, he diminished the shear. So according to Ravashi, from this price, so we can only deduce one halacha, that a kosher bracha needs a shear. That explains why he can't use it for Abdullah and for Birch Samazin, because once he tasted it by Abdullah, he reduced it, he lessened the shear, it's no longer obvious, and a shear is required. So we do learn from here that a shear is required, that we know. The fact that Ti'ima is paying, that we don't know. It's, it's a true halacha, but we don't know it from this price. Let's conclude regarding Paigim. says the Gemara Rabbi Yaakov Bar'idi Kabud Achatzva Pigimah. Rabbi Yaakov was Makbid. That even a pitcher, which is not a personally sized uh, uh, utensil, it's a pitcher, it's not your personal supply, still, if a person drinks from it, it's not considered fresh and, and suitable for, for a kosher bracha, it's considered pogum. Ravida bar shisha, kabeda kosa begima. He was merely makbid on a kosher pogum. One drinks from a cup, fine. The rest of the wine in that cup is considered pogum. It's not considered fresh and it's not royal for kosher bracha. My bravashi, kapit afilu achar achavisa pgimta. He was makpid even achavisa, even on a on a barrel pgimta which had been drunk from. Rashbam says we're speaking about a small sized barrel, but not a huge barrel. That certainly can be affected by merely tasting it. But a small barrel, even that gets affected. If somebody should taste it and it's not roy any longer for kosher brach. Okay, let's review today's da. We learned that a meal which had been initiated in Erev Shabbos, come Shabbos, you don't have to interrupt that meal, you don't have to be mafsiket with Berchas HaMazayin, you don't have to remove your personal table. Rather, as the Mura tells us, Purus map is enough, just spread a tablecloth, just spread a sheet over the food, get it out of sight, get up and make Kiddush, and the second segment of that meal would automatically be considered as to the Shabbos. Shabbos has the ability to reclassify anything that's eaten during Shabbos and have it labeled as Sudas Shabbos. We learned that this only applies to Kiddush, one has to stop once the time for Kiddush arrives, Make Kiddush and then eat. When it comes to Abdullah, you're allowed to extend your meal. Actually, Rosh Bam says it's Kavit Shabbos to do so, to extend Shabbos into the weekday. And only after he ended Suda Shlishis will he make Abdullah. Certainly, this only applies to a Suda, but just a mere um, snack or drink that cannot be done before Abdullah, even if he already began on Shabbos, because each drink, each bit of food is considered a separate entity and you cannot eat before Abdullah. This applies to food, to wine, to beer. Water is not a concern before Abdullah, but certainly before Kiddush, as the Rashbam pointed out. We learned that if one missed Kiddush Friday night, he can make it up the next day. We learned that the covet of the daytime, the covet Yoim, takes priority over covet Laila. We learned that generally a mitzvah is meant to be done bishat and its prescribed time. 
Certainly when it comes to Kiddush, where we're meant to usher in the Shabbos in a hurry, to uh, express excitement, and Chavivas for Shabbos, but when it comes to Havdal, it's a Shabbos, actually we try to delay it as much as possible. For instance, this case where this fellow only had one kois and he'd like to have his Malava Malka, with Birch HaSamazan Ala Kois, in this case HaChamim made a special exemption, they allowed to even eat before Havdalah, to enable the Havdalah and the Birch HaSamazan to be said on the Kois Yain, and we concluded that we actually learned eight halachis from this Bryson. Hatzlacha Rava and be well.